medalist from Los Angeles in front of the hometown crowd. And that's a big one for Evangelisti, and he knows it. No big surprise here, Dwight, in the sense that he was ranked eighth in the world last year in the long jump. This home crowd has certainly helped him here try and nail down third place. Good speed, good arm, excellent technique on the runway. He goes all the way for it. Excellent height, extension into the pit, and no problem with the board. There's no matter of a foul. Remember, these athletes are running about 50 yards and trying to put their foot on the end of the toe board and missing sometimes by just one or two inches. There he gets the distance. 27 feet, 6 inches, moves him into third place. Could it be possible that Evangelista could do to Myrick today what he did to him three years ago in Los Angeles? Certainly that is going through Larry's mind at this very moment. He's been very close. The crowd did not want him to better the Evangelista's jump, that's for sure. Watching down the runway, the legs are brought together after the jump and he's in the air. Head and shoulders thrown forward and down as he tries to reach for every bit. He's got the whole board. And if he could have willed himself any further, he would have. But 26 feet, 11 inches is not an improvement for Larry Myrick. And he gets fourth place at the World Championship. Gets knocked out once again in a major championship by Giovanni Evangelisti in front of the Rome crowd. 62, 170 pounds of great athletic ability. This is the last chance, folks. Final jump for Carl Lewis. Anytime you see an athlete in a long jump land like that, they probably aren't going to be able to get their best jump. 28 feet, 3 inches for Carl Lewis. Another outstanding, consistent performance for Lewis. He dominates this event. 52 straight victories. Sprinting style on the runway. Goes down on the right and for the left. Beautiful technique and extension of the pit and lands right on his bottom. Of the 30 longest long jumps in history, this man owns 23 of them. Before those last two steps, it's just like he's running down lane four of the straightaway in 100 meters. And he gets just about all the board. In fact, he missed a 30-foot jump in Indianapolis a few years ago because of a plain foul. No mark in the plasticine. Carl Lewis once again. This is the third attempt of United States vaulter Earl Bell. No, he is the fourth man out of 14 that started this afternoon out of the competition, 10 are remaining at 18 feet, 10 and a quarter inches. Now, the Soviet Union, Rodion Gatoyin. This is his second attempt at 19 feet, one quarter of an inch. And he's over very easily, Larry. Imagine trying to like to vault over a two-story house and release the pole when you're upside down. That's what these guys are doing here. World ranked in the pole vault last year. Watch him. There's the plan. Notice how close he is to the top of the pole. He rides it, he bends, he uses his left leg to balance himself. He's upside down vertically. Good push off, jackknife off. He is cleanly over. Part of the stable of 19 foot pole vaulters in the Soviet Union. And here is in your own of France, another country with tremendous pole vaulters, up for his second attempt at 19 feet a quarter inches. And he also makes it. This competition is really heating up. The higher you go in pole vault competition, the faster your approach is, just as it is in the high jump. You must take that speed, harness it, and build down the runway. He's running faster now than he was at 18 feet. Watch the plant. Look at him, ride well, get those knees together. Release, push off as explosively as you can with your right hand, over cleanly at 19 feet, a quarter of an inch. And if it's anything that Junior On has, it's a tremendous amount of speed. He's one of the greatest sprinters in the pole vault. Now, Marian Kolasa of Poland, 
a very tall individual at six feet six inches his third attempt at 19 feet a quarter inch and he makes it four men over 19 feet talk about pressure dwight let's go back up to big ember and we'll get back to the pole vault. His first jump since making 18, eight and a quarter. Ooh. Nice clearance, Dwight, as he, as he does his own version of praying there. I certainly didn't see him touch the ball. I don't know what he was waiting for to happen. Little smile creases his face. He's all business in pole vaulting. They say he's a real jokester off the field and away from training, but a very serious athlete once there. Interestingly enough, you see that pole? That's made in Carson City, Nevada. He vaults on American pole. Watch how clean and how strong he is. Look at the acceleration he gets with his arms from the pole. Great clearance up at 19, two and a quarter. Do you believe the clearance up there? He leaves no room for doubt. Once again, oh. this has got to be a 20-foot <laughs> jump. It's just a matter of time until he jumps 20 feet. And I think all the vaulters that I've spoken to certainly feel the exact same way. He has demonized this event. Now his teammate, Rodion Gatillion of the Soviet Union. He is right in the thick of things. They could go one, two. This man was ranked number two in the world last year behind Bubka. He up high on top, but he dropped his legs into it. We'll be able to see it on the replay. But an excellent vault at 19, two and a quarter. So many other vaulters you watch kind of shoot off at this height, left or right a bit. The Russians stay right on the center of the track. They get off cleanly in their plant. Watch, they ride the pole well. They pull their knees right up. Their center of gravity stays there. Look at the clearance, easy. He just didn't have enough speed down the runway. He came down on the bar. Here's Vigneron of France. Third attempt at 19, two and a quarter. And he tried to steady it right on top. He's very good at that. He settled for the silver medal. You could see the anguish on his face. He knows how good a jump that was. Only if I had one more shot at it. Legitimate cheating, right? Exactly. They're allowed to steady that bar as long as it doesn't come off. Put it right back up there. Now, first attempt at the world record, 19, 10 and a quarter. Bobka has won the event at 19, two and a quarter. He has the bar go up to 19, 10 and It's Carl Lewis thinks it would be to just break it one time. His first round attempt in the men's long jump. And a very good effort on the very first jump, which is typical of Carl Lewis, Larry. Puts the pressure on everybody else. You know, every Olympic champion, Dwight, for the last 50 years has been able to run the 100-yard dash hand timed in 9.4 to 9.7. This man can run it in 8.8 .8 seconds, and this is why it makes this event right now so great, the long jump. He brings speed to it that no one else ever has. You can see here, it looks like he's feeling for the board a little bit on the first attempt. It's awful tough to deal with the wind. He has tremendous technique in the air, Larry. He's got great extension. Let's see how close he comes. Only less than an inch. He is so close to right on the board every time. That board is eight inches as the foot is pointed towards. And so he got, as you say, seven, almost seven and a half inches of it. Here is the man ranked number one in the world last year. Just nosing out Lewis for that honor. He's an up and comer. This is Robert Emmer. And as you can see, Emmer's technique completely different. It's the hanging technique. And he does it very, very well. He got 29 feet, one inch earlier this year on this one, 27, two and three quarters. The Soviets seem to lack some of the speed A Sweden cannot spend that kind of time doing anything else but training for the high jump. The bar at seven feet eight and a half inches. And he makes it on his very first attempt to stay in the lead. A new world championship record for Patrick Freiberg of Sweden. He has a very short run-up, Larry, by comparison to a lot of the jumpers. He just feels that the speed he generates in that short period of time, he can control very, very well. Right, that's a great point, because I think it's true. Long jumpers take up 66 feet, and they're at 95% total speed capability. You don't need all that distance. Makes it with a little bit of a brush at the end. Let's go back to Charlie and more men's marathon.
still there to feed him. Right there, Dick, nothing has been settled here. Silberg has made his first jump at 7, 9, and 3 quarters. This is Kotlin's third attempt at that height. And he's over. He doesn't even touch it. His tenth jump of the competition, and it's his best effort of the night. He's even too tired to celebrate. Like, I don't think there's ever been a competition where there's been so many athletes jumping so high. There's no doubt about that, Larry. There's four guys over seven, eight and a half. Now there are two over seven, nine and three quarters. Hockman, just a beautiful jump. His height right on top of the bar and an inch to an inch and a half clearance. And he's so tired. This competition has been so very long. He runs the turn very, very well. Snaps the left leg up very hard. Great arch, tremendous extension over the bar. Clear daylight all the round, just below his bottom. Outstanding jump, but he'll have to jump the next tight in order to catch Silver. Let's go back out to the marathon course with Charlie and Frank. 17 meters or more. Oleg Prochenko from the Soviet Union was eighth with 17.23 meters.
11th place was earned by Peter Dusen from the Federal Republic of Germany. He reached 17.26 meters in the second try. Joseph Taiwo from Nigeria finished in sixth position. He reached 17.29 meters. The Polish competitor, Jacek Kostuszynski, finished in sixth place. He had six jumps over 17 meters, with the best being 17.35 meters. Alexander Kovalenko from the USSR had only one jump over 17 meters. In his first trial, he reached 17.38 meters, which earned him fourth place. The winner of the bronze medal was Oleg Sakirkin from the Soviet Union. His official distance was 17.43 meters, which he achieved in his last trial. Mike Conley from the USA won the silver medal. He had four jumps over 17.30 meters, the last one measuring 17.67 meters. Winner of the competition was once again Bulgarian Christo Markov. His best jump was 17.92 meters, which earned him the title of world champion. The length of the individual phase of the triple jump has been discussed. A particular topic of debate has been the contribution that each phase makes to the total distance of the triple jump. It has been concluded that there are relative merits of the two most common techniques. The Russian technique, which emphasizes the hot phase, Polish technique which emphasizes the jump phase. 